I'm Russ and today I'm having a look at the Geek and Son um, Henry table. We, um, we saw this at the UK Games Expo, we went up there hoping to order a Dennis table which was their, their first model and found this new model on display there and we fell in love with it and ended up ordering this one instead. So um, yeah, if you've already watched our last I don't know, two or three videos, you've already had a sneak preview of it and um, Yes, yeah, so it's seen it in use, but here I'm going to go through and give an overview of all of its features and let you know what I think at the end. So, the first main feature was we wanted a dining table, we only a little flat here, so it needed to be dual use, so yeah, we've got the slats to go on top, which make it a dining table with a recess underneath to, you can even leave games in there and um, cover it up and have your dinner and then uncover and carry on with games. Um, one concern with that might be any spillages. Now we've got a table protector we've got to uh, protect it anyway but um, in theory it's spillages won't get through to the game vault underneath um, in between each of the slats there's a rubber seal and so the water sort of falls to the edges and there's a rail along the inside with holes in to drain the water out so it should keep the inside nice and dry I've not tested it yet though so um, yeah I'm gonna test it now so yeah I've got some water this feels so wrong. <laughs> I don't want to do this. But uh, yeah, so we're going to pour some water on the table. There we go, like that. A bit more. I can see through the groove actually, the water is running and getting down towards the edge. Oh, yeah, I'm the same this way. So yeah, I think I'll put plenty on there. So yeah, the water's going down. It's nearly reached the end of this end. So yeah, it's almost reached the end. So, I mean, if you had a spillage, you'd wipe it up quite quickly anyway. So we'll mop up, and then we'll see what's what when we uh, take the table apart. So yeah, it's still sitting in the gap though. So uh, I'm going to try just mop out the worst of it because when you take the slats apart, anything that's still in there is going to drop on the table. There's not a lot you can do about that. So we'll try and. If we mop out what we can, like you would if you had a spillage normally. Okay, so now we're going to remove the slats, and to do that, there's a nice handy lever under the end here, just push up, and it pushes the end slat out so we can lift them out, put them to one side. Now, the water was between these two here, so what I'm going to do, rather than take them apart straight away, I'm going to Keep them together and slide up and see whether any water did get through or not. And no, it didn't, it's dry as a bone in there, which is uh, good to know. So, yeah, I mean, we use a table protector anyway, which is all in one piece, so water wouldn't get through. But I wanted to test it just to show you how it works, and uh, yeah, that's all nice and dry. Now, the problem will be that there is water in between these two slats, so I'm going to keep them together and lift them off. There we go, and I've just dropped water all over the floor. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. It doesn't look like it actually made it to the ends though. There's no water in these side grooves, but yeah, it didn't get to the game. If I had a game under there, it would have been safe and sound. So that's good to know. Okay then, so we now come to the inside of the table and we've got the recessed area, but it's lovely blue um, velvet type material. Um, but this board, we went for a double-sided one, so this lifts out and we can flip it over and on the other side, a nice red one instead, which just drops straight back in, which is lovely. And this is yeah, what we play most of our games on. There is another option underneath this, so move this board away. This is quite heavy, let's uh, stick it over there. Now, with that out, you can see there's a Perspex layer in here. And the idea of this is, it comes with a handy little sucky tool. You can stick it in the corner and you can lift the Perspex up and stick paper maps or um, yeah, anything you want under there, really. I suppose you could even stick a board under, possibly, if you wanted it ultra protected. But uh, yeah, so that's a nice extra. It's not really for, I think it's more for role players and get it off there we go and the like so um it's another option which can be useful so we'll stick the uh oh 
insert the hole. You have to watch out, make sure the tabs are still upwards though, so you've got something to pull it out with. Okay, so what else have we got? The rail that I mentioned, which is designed for dripping the water down, actually makes a really good card holder. And uh, yeah, it wasn't designed that way, it was a happy accident, I believe, but uh, yeah, it does make a good card holder, which is another useful feature. And I unplugged the table. <laughs> it's got a couple of features uh, using electric, and when I was doing the water test, I wasn't sure where the water would go. Um, so, there are we. So I. Uh, yeah, I unplugged it from the electric just to be safe. I think the water was meant to be challenged, cha challenged, ch channeled down towards the legs and out down that way. But uh, yeah, I thought better safe than sorry. So I plugged in, and you can see the lights have come on. And uh, this is another op optional extra. Oh. Uh, it comes with a remote control, and you can select pretty much any colour you can think of, and you can make them dimmer or brighter. And I believe there's a mode on here where it's going to cycle through. Yeah, like that one. And I can speed it up so it changes quicker. Uh, it's blinking on and off. Blinking on and off and changing colours. There's, there's, all, there's all sorts of stuff on here. So, uh, yeah, that's quite good. I mean, it's no good for lighting your game up. Um, they're not strong enough for that, and if they were, I think they'd dazzle you and distract too much. But they're nice for, let's see if I can stop that. Let's turn it off. Turn it off and on again, and we might stop it. There we go. So turn it off. Oh, it's still blinking. How do, how do I stop it blinking, Kel? <laughs> Whoa! Can I see a button? What one? Whatever turns it off. Yeah. And then turn it back on again. I did that. It's still going. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you try. Ke Kelly uses that re remote more than I do. So. That's too, still, still flashing. It's not. That was me. Oh, I fixed yeah. it. All oh, right. There you go. She's fixed it. I can't use remote controls. It's official. So <laughs> there we go. So yeah, that's, that's the lights, which yeah, add, add a nice little bit of sort of atmosphere to the table. Let's do that a little bit. There we go. Right, and the other feature that this one's got, which wasn't available on the Dennis, is a built-in sound system. And uh, I've got a panel down here with a USB charging point and a little Bluetooth head, head, head unit. Oh. And it's already connected to my iPad and started playing on its own when I turned it on. So I'm going to stop that and turn it off. The reason I like this is for games like One Night Ultimate Werewolf. And uh, so I'm going to load it up on my iPad. Excuse the state of my screen. And I'm going to click play. Everyone. Close your eyes. Wake up and look at another player's card. You are now that role. If you viewed the alpha mystic book, but yeah, it's. We'll turn it off because yeah, you don't want to hear me trying to talk over Eric Summer. And uh, I don't know who the lady is that does the voices, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it's got built-in speakers, which um, is actually for games like Werewolf because it's the sounds. It's like it's coming at the table when you're playing, and it's also going to help disguise um, the movement of cards uh, really well as well. And yeah, I mean, you, you can pipe through tabletop audio, or what's the other one? There's another service on your iPad where you can have, have a sound pad and put all different sounds through for atmospherics and stuff. And yeah, it's absolutely brilliant for that. And uh, yeah, really, really nice. Um, so I think that's all I can show you from this angle. There's a couple more features, we've got some accessories to show you. And there's a pull out, it's essentially a desk at this end of the table which pulls out. There's a standard drawer at that end, and this end's got a desk. So, uh, yeah, we'll go and have a look at them now. Okay, so this is a view of the room you don't normally get to see. And we come around to have a look at the, um, the desk at this end of the table. So, we're going to pull it out. It pulls out like a normal drawer. But it's solid. So this part comes up. Like that. And then out of the drawer. There's another piece that sits on there. And there you go, you've got a nice solid desk and it locks in place as well. There's another one of those levers inside which locks it and yeah, makes it great for I guess a DM again for um, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons and the like. And there's a rest on here for putting your rule books and whatever up. And uh, <laughs> it's got email come through and the sound came through the table. <laughs> 
but yeah, the, t the, um, the speakers on the table are Bluetooth and it will take yeah any any sound from your device. Now I can't find there it is. <laughs> Couldn't find the locking piece and then yeah, better slides in as well. It's also got soft close on the drawers, up, so it closes itself nice and soft. And uh, yeah, so that's that one. Now we'll go and have a look at the accessories. Okay, so let's have a look at the accessories. We can see we've got quite a range of them on the table here. Apologies for me being slightly out of shot and close up, but that's what I had to do with the camera to uh, be able to show you where they go on the table. So first up, we've got a little basic tray um, used for counters or whatever you like. And they're simply, they've got a ridge on the back and it simply slots in, drop down, and there you've got a nice solid tray and you can slide them along lift them up a little bit, slide them and yeah, you can move them along and adjust them and that's really good. We've got another one. This one is just a hole with a nice metal pot and cork in the bottom which makes a great bottle holder or uh, yeah, glasses in there. Yeah, nice big glass. Um, slightly disappointed. Cups with a low handle on them however don't sit very well because the handle is going to catch on the pot. But, it would sit on this one if it wasn't for the top of the table hanging over. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then we've got a uh, wine glass holder. The wine glass slots in like so, and it keeps it nice and uh, nice and safe in there as well. So there are the, uh, the three little holders. So next up, we've got. Essentially, a desk and a drawer. It's got a big hole underneath, you can put your manuals and whatever else in. And that slots in just the same as any other. And you've got a nice sturdy surface for, I don't know, you could maybe put your player boards on there and your manuals inside or anything you like, really. It's, uh, yeah, it's just another nice handy option to have. It's quite solid and heavy, that one. And then we've got another little tray. This one's smaller. Now this one is designed for this dice tower. I mean, look at this dice tower. That is pretty... Um, Impressive solid wood and it's absolutely gorgeous and it's designed to sit in this tray which then hooks on the side of the table However, these accessories were originally designed for the Dennis table which doesn't have this overhang so um, Let's put the tray in. You can still use it as a normal tray But the dice tower is not going to fit in it anymore because it gets stuck on the overhang Which is unfortunate, but uh, Geek and Son do say that they, they're working on a new range specifically for Henry rather than just reusing Dennis accessories. So uh, yeah, there we go. There's yeah, lots of choice and options there. So um, yeah, we'll zoom back out and go back over there and I'll give you my thoughts on the table. Right, okay, so there we go. That was a pretty thorough going round of the table, I think. Um, the only thing I didn't show you was the head panel, head unit for the uh, Bluetooth. I'll stick a photo up somewhere here about now-ish, probably, so you can see that. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, there we go. That's that's the table. Um, I should point out that we paid full price for this table. Uh, we bought it ourselves um, because we were putting it on the channel. Though Geek and Son did give us all the accessories and the sound system. I think they threw in for free. So we paid for the table, the insert, the top, the lights, and um, yeah. So we paid for the lion's share of it and. Uh, but they were kind enough to give us some accessories because we're covering it on the channel. But I just wanted to make it clear up front that, yeah, we, we, we paid most of it. So uh, these will be my uh, truthful and honest thoughts on the table. So, do we love it? Yes, we do. It is an amazing table. We love it. I've dreamed of having one for ages and um, I was very lucky to be able to, to get one. Um, it's, I look at it as an heirloom piece of furniture, it's going to last for years and years and hopefully the kids, because they turn out to be gamers as well, hopefully uh, they'll make use of it once uh, once we're gone, and, uh, you know. So yeah, it's, it's lovely. I mean, it, there are a couple of niggles, I'll get to them in a minute, but what I like about this one over Dennis is the nice wide overhang. And is it, yeah, although, although our coffee cups don't fit inside the cup holders, um, they do, our coasters, are exactly the same width as this edge piece, so we put our cups on the side here uh, on a coaster, and yes, yeah, so we put our drinks there. But we can also have player boards up here. I think the size player boards will probably fit quite nicely along here, and whatever. I mean, you've also I mentioned the card holder. I really should have got some cards out to show you. 
<laughs> but um, yeah, right, yeah. Why not? Let's grab some cards from somewhere. Let's... Oh. Take it to right. It's always got loads of cards in it. So, right. so yeah, the card holder. You can just line all your cards up. And I'm here, and yeah, nice and easy. You can lean over and still see the board and stuff, and don't get in the way. And they're nice and handy, and they just almost need line of sight. So it's lovely being able to see. But I suppose the only downside if someone's sitting next to you, you can see each other's cards. But we uh, we try and play honestly anyway, so uh, it's not really a big deal for us. So uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so that's good. The, the lights are nice, as I mentioned. They're, they're good for a little bit of atmospherics in the background. You don't want them too bright. You don't want them flashing. But they're just nice to add a little bit of atmosphere. The audio is excellent. Um, we, we did have a hiccup at first um, when the table arrived. The unit wouldn't connect to Bluetooth or anything. Uh, so Martin came down a two, two hour plus drive. He came down to have a look at it. Found that the unit was faulty. Um, in a two hour drive back again, and um, they sent out another unit in post, which was easy to pull out and plug a new one in. And yeah, it works absolutely brilliantly. Um, even at dinner time, but you used to stick the uh, stick to music on through the sound bar in front of the telly there uh, but now we just do it through the table it's um, it's, it's not quite so in, in your face it's more sort of, it sounds more like background music coming out through the table than it does straight out the speakers on the sound bar so yeah, yeah we, like, we like that um, it's good. yeah I mean we played Ticket to Ride the other day and I put train sounds on randomly in the background out at the table and just, yeah another, another nice little feature not essential but nice to have um, the accessories we've not got a huge amount of use out of. Uh, where we've got a short, the smaller table, this is the smallest size of Henry, uh, I think it's 100 by 150. Um, and where it is short, there's not a lot of room between players sitting on this side, so there's not really a massive amount of room for the accessories on the small table. You, you, you can get them in, but they, they might be a bit obtrusive because of the lack of space. Um, and because there's drawers at both the ends, there's no rail at the end of the table, it's only on the long side. So, um, yeah, that, that's. A little bit disappointing, but it's understandable. There's drawers there. What can you do? <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was it was a choice we made. Um, where are we? So yeah, we like all that. That's all fine. The insert. Um, they, they do different materials and and stuff in the insert. This one's quite hard. Um, just sort of felt material, which we really like. They also do another one that's more padded. It's got a bit more bounce in it for getting cards off of. Um, but we don't have any trouble with this one. The only problem we found with this material is it molts a little bit. Um, and you'd have to sweep it off and get all the loose fibres and stuff. And they're also a dust magnet. After each game, you end up having to hoover it off. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it comes just white specks and bits of dust. It, it just, yeah. It, I think because of the deep colour and, and, and nice, it, it just shows any imperfections show up when the dust turns up. So, uh, yeah, that's that. Um, I think my only other slight niggle um, was the wires for the. the, the um, for the lights and the sound unit, they, they come downwards just inside the leg on this side, uh, which means I'm not I'm normally sitting here when we play where the table normally is, and it means I can't go right up to the end because my leg would catch and possibly damage the sockets. So uh, that's a bit of a shame. It would have been nice if they were up inside the bottom of the table sideways, so that wasn't an issue, but um, maybe that's something that Geek and Sun can look at in the future. It shouldn't be hard to turn the sockets around. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, so yeah, we, we love it, we're extremely happy with it, um, it's perhaps not quite as sturdy as we would have liked, um, I mean, it is a nice solid table, but when the kids, because they're short and they can't reach, they tend to lean on the table when they're coming up to try and reach to play a game, and they do push it a bit, and it does wobble, perhaps a meal or two, which is a little bit annoying, but, um, no, it's, it's, it's just minor things, really, um, there's another little mark here where it's just the grain of the wood though, it's what you get in the natural wood table. Um, but I say it's all just little nickety things, but uh, all in all we absolutely love it and uh, I'm glad we got it. Um, yeah, I was going to talk about prices, but um, yeah. We, we got a lot of extras and bells and whistles with this one and it was, it was a lot of money. Um, it's definitely a luxury item. Uh, <laughs> there, there are cheaper ways of... of getting it or, or making your own gaming table if, if you haven't got the money. Um, we were just fortunate to um, be able to get this one. Um, it's definitely a, one in a once in a lifetime purchase and uh, yeah. Absolutely amazing but I keep saying that and I keep waffling. I'm just, I'm just trying to think in my head whether I've missed anything out. Um, 
Uh, just to say that yeah, there's a few different tables that Geek and Sun make now. Um, they've got a budget one as well now, which is probably worth checking out. Uh, Dennis was the original one, and now this one's come out. And I think they've brought out another version similar to this with the overhang, which has got some uh, fancier legs on it, which I saw. They've also got coffee tables and all sorts of furniture. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're highly recommended. I mean, that's something else I didn't mention. During the production process for Maldrin at the Expo in June, um, it arrived at the... When was it? Middle of, sep middle of last month, so middle of September, June, June not August. So well, two, two and a half months to ha have it built, which wasn't bad. But during that process, also got photographs come through of the table, um, of, of the wood being prepared and the table at various stages of manufacturing. So that, that was a really nice touch as well. And uh, yeah, and it's got a one year guarantee on it. So uh, yeah, you've got, you've got peace of mind there that it's, it's all going to be good. And uh, yeah, highly recommended. So, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, keep look forward to seeing more, more of this table. It'll we'll be in all the videos now. You've, you've seen it in the last few that we've made. Um, and, yeah, check out. I'll put a link to Geek and Sons' website in, in the details below. And, yeah, be sure to go and check them out. Well worthwhile. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.